Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host and founder of Hope in Christ Ministries, Denise M. Walker, and thank you for joining me um, for today's show. Let's open with a word of prayer and then we'll begin. Father, we thank you and we praise you for another time together, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, O oh God. For your word is life, Father God. I pray that you open our eyes, our ears, our heart, that we would know the truth. The truth of you, Lord Jesus. The truth of your ways. The truth of everything that that is pertaining to you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, welcome to today's show. I'm your host, author Denise M. Walker, and I am here today with another devotional, and my devotional is um, titled, The Yoke of Christ, Take on the Yoke of Christ. Um, I wrote this devotional um, some time ago, actually in 2015, and I wanted to just take a moment, a few moments, to talk a little bit more about taking the yoke of Christ. Um, because we may have a yoke, but it may not be Christ's yoke. So, um, I like images, so I'm going to start with giving you a visual of the image that I have. Um, it's an image of, um, calf, so two, um, calf together, and they're yoked. Um, they have the yoke around their necks, and they can only move, um, with the control of those that are moving them. And they're pretty large calf, um, pretty large animals, and um, they are bound. They are yoked together and um, controlled by the humans that are taking them wherever they're going. And so this picture symbolizes what sin and the lack of relationship with the Lord does to our lives. So... Let's take a look at a little bit more about the yoke. In Deuteronomy 28 and 48, God warns the Israelites, and this is from the commentary of the Forerunner Forerunner Commentary um, Bible Study. Um, God warns the Israelites that if they fail to serve him properly, he would allow their enemies to fit them with a yoke of iron. And remember the yoke um, that was around the calf's neck. Um, clearly, the yoke of iron, a heavy, uncomfortable, unyielding, confining restraint, is an implement um, of destruction used by God to punish his people for their sins. Um, as the um, passage in Deuteronomy 28 and 48, um, as it states, people bring um, the yoke upon themselves through disobedience to God's law. Um if we are feeling that our yoke is too heavy, maybe we are wearing the wrong yoke, um, as is written in this commentary. If so, we need to examine ourselves, according to Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Um, have we brought the yoke of iron upon ourselves? Um, and if we do not repent, a heavy yoke of sin will destroy us. And so um, that's what the commentary states in and and we look we'll look more at some scriptures that talk about the yoke the yoke um and then it goes on to say how many times do we blame god for our trials when in fact by our um worldliness and some of the things just disobeying god um we fit ourselves sometimes with an iron yoke when we yoke ourselves um when we refuse to recognize our sins or evaluate our spiritual condition um, soberly, as stated in this um, commentary, we are returning to the bondage from which we have been so graciously freed by Jesus Christ. And um, it goes on to say, just a little further, Jeremiah writes um, in Lamentations 1 and 14, the yoke of my transgressions was bound and thrust upon my neck. He made my strength fail. The Lord delivered me into the hands of those whom I am not able to withstand and so um when we 
have opened the door to um, different things and we disobey God. We disobey God's way, um, his will for our lives. Sometimes the yoke, we bring the yoke upon ourselves. And Jesus says, my, my favorite scripture, um, Jesus says, take my yoke. And so we're going to, before we go into that, um, again, we know that the picture of the Calvin and the picture of the yoke is the sin that has us um, yoked, has us yoked in our lives. We, um, we don't have that relationship or we've gone out of fellowship with God and we're just doing our own thing and, and we don't realize we're yoked. We may be walking free, but we're yoked by sin. And so... Um, sin yokes us, controls us, and uh, we begin to operate in our own will and not God's will. And so we start to feel the pressure and feel the, um, the what like we're just under pressure and bound. Um, then um, it becomes a burden and too much to bear. So the sin becomes a burden and it's like the yoke on the calves. And um, God has a great and perfect plan for our lives. And that's what I love about the scripture from Christ. And I'm going to get into that scripture along with some other scriptures. But that's what I love about it. Because even when we're yoked, he loves us so much to help us to identify that yoke. Um, some, But we still have a will. He won't violate any of our wills. And so we have to make a choice. Um, we have to make that choice to um, surrender. To surrender for him to remove the yoke because he is all um, that we need. And um, and I go on to say in the devotional that I wrote some time ago. But I love this particular um, scripture and this particular topic. And in it I say, God has a great and perfect plan for our lives. I said that. Um, and he knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. Um, he is the creator of our very being. He placed something inside of us that only he can feel. And so um, I wrote that and I think back on it and I think about um, only he can feel because we try to fill our lives with all this stuff. We we want our boyfriends when we're young. We, oh, we, we think, you know, we, we can't wait to be adults. I teach children and oftentimes they'll say, I can't wait to be an adult. I can't wait to get out of my parents' house because they think they're free to do what they want. But we are all subject to God. We're, we're all um, going to even account for our lives to him because he is our father. And so... Um, but all of that stuff that we chase, the the clothes, the shoes, um, the money, the cars, the um the sin, the different sins, the um idolatry, the um the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, um, when we commit fornication and all these different sins, um, sleeping around, um, living with our boyfriends and girlfriends before we get married. We um, think we know love. We think we know love. And I say that because I'm talking about I thought I knew love. I didn't know love until I came to Christ. And that really um, God began to allow me to see the love in my husband. But I didn't truly know love until I knew Christ, until I came into a relationship. And so, um, as I said in my devotional, he can only feel it. Everything that we think we're trying to do, only Christ can fill that void. It's a void that we're trying to fill with stuff. We're trying to fill with drinking and smoking and turn up, as the kids might say. Um, but he's saying, come to me. Take, the, take that yoke off. Take it off. Take it off. Surrender it to me and take my yoke and take my yoke. So, um, again, um the scripture, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite scriptures is Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. And I, and I talked about it just a, a little bit, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. And it says, um, um, again, the scripture is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through, through 30. And it's Christ said, come to me, come to me. That means I have to move my feet. And go towards Christ. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take, 
So not only are the verb, you're coming, you got to come, you got to come. He said, come, if you're heavy, if you, 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 you're laboring, you're heavy, um, and all of this stuff, you load it down, come. And I will, not I might, not I might have, not I could, not I should, but I will give you rest. And then he goes on to say, take my yoke. Take my yoke. So here, you got you to gotta receive it. He's offering it. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find a rest for your souls and then he goes further to say for my yoke is easy and my burden is light so he's saying you don't have to carry the yoke of sin you don't have to continue in that come I have a yoke for you come take my yoke Turn to me. My yoke, Jesus describes his yoke. He says, my yoke is easy. And the burden that I may have or you may perceive is light. It's not like what you're feeling. When we are in our sin, we don't want to admit it. That's why we we don't want to come to Christ because we don't believe that we're good enough. Like, we don't believe we're good enough um, because we think he's angry with us or we think God won't won't accept us because of all the stuff we've done, but He said, "Come." He didn't. He didn't. He didn't bring all that other stuff up. He said, "Come." That means move your feet, turn from where you are, turn away, and come. Come to me. And so I I love working down words. So of course I wrote these words down. And so when He said, "Come," He said, "Follow. Come near. Come near. Come to me." Come near to me. He said, those all who labor. So in that word means weary and tired. You're weary and you're tired. You, you don't done it all. You don't try it at all. He said, come, come on, come on. Come to me. And he and then the other word, heavy laden. Heavy laden means burdened upon. You're overloaded. You're overloaded with it. You are weary and you're overloaded. He said, come near, come near, draw near in prayer, in my word, draw near, surrender, surrender unto me, surrender your will for my will. And I will, so he says all that, come near, you're weary, you're tired, you're overloaded, I will, I will refresh you. That's what rest means, I will refresh you. He says, take, raise up, lift up, here, take up, lift up, my yoke. And what that phrase means, rest upon my yoke, rest upon, elevate, lift it up, take it, put the other one down, take this one, rest upon it. And he said, learn, increase your knowledge of me. He said, for my, for I am meek or gentle and lowly or humble in heart and you will find you will meet with that's what that that part means you will meet with rest for your souls your souls your seat of your feelings your desires your affections your heart you will meet with rest you will rest in me as you take my yoke but in order to take the yoke of Christ, we gotta let go of the other yoke. And then he and the other words mean he says, For my yoke, used of any burden or bondage as that of slavery. So he's in my yoke. So the yoke that yoke was like um for burden and bondage and slavery. See, when we're slaves of Christ, that's peace. Cause he is uh, our master. But he's not like a Master that drives you and beats you like the Pharaoh's order during the times of the Old Testament. But he is his mastership, or if that's a word, um, his kingship is different. We slave with um, 
That's love. And then he says, my yoke, my yoke is easy. It's fit for use. When you look up the word in that part, the word easy, fit for use or good or pleasant. My yoke is pleasant and my burden, my load is light. So as we um, continue throughout life, I know I wrote this back in 2015 and we were entering into 2016. But I say to anyone that's listening, um, as you enter just through life, as you enter into situations, whatever it is, you need Christ. I um, developed a relationship with Christ more than 20 years ago. And um, I would say, well, close to 20 years ago. And I never want to go back because I was yoked with sin. I was yoked and didn't realize I was yoked. I was so depressed and downtrodden. I was a mess. As people say, I was a hot mess. And when I came to Christ, that yoke that he gave me, that I surrendered the other yoke, I laid my, my, the other yoke down and surrendered my life and, and cried out to him. And the yoke he gave me is it's fit for use. It's pleasant. And, his, and the burden, any, any burden, if it's any, it's none, um, is light. So I'm a living witness to say that this is so, this is so true. Um, and I say, not just into another year or another month or whatever it is, as you walk through life, put down the yokes of sin, the yokes of regret, deception, pain, and any other thing that is hindering your surrender, your true walk, your intimacy with Christ. Anything that yokes you. Because remember, like the calf is yoking you. You can't move. You're controlled. So you can't get to Jesus. You can't get to Jesus because you're yoked. And you're controlled by the enemy. In your life. But all you have to do. He said. You have to come. So you have to say. Lord. I surrender. Lord. I'm sorry. Repent. Turn away. You have to. You. We have to do something. A lot of times. I hear people ministering. In in today's time. And I hear them. You know. Talking about the grace message. And things like that. But when I read the word. And yes. There is grace. His grace is sufficient. But when I read the word, there are a lot of verbs. And as an English teacher, a verb is an action. You have to do something. So it's not where God is just going to do it all. We have to do something. There is an action that has to take place and it's on our end. So we have to move. We have to surrender. We have to repent. We have to turn away and come to Christ and take his yoke. Um, He knows what we need before we even speak. If it's deliverance from homosexuality, if it's deliverance from fornication, if it's deliverance from um, um, perversion, whatever it is. If it's deliverance from being sexually molested, whatever it is, he knows what we need. He knows and he's our healer. He is the source of our peace. He's our, He is my healer. I know that he healed me. Nobody can tell me otherwise. He is the strength. He is our true true joy. All of that comes from him. And so I say, as you keep going in life, get on the path of righteousness. Get on the path of walking with Christ. And just picture you this this road. Christ is the road to life. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's every single thing that we need. I just can't say that enough because I was there. I was there. I was clubbing. I was in the club. And then one day I went to the club. The last time I went to the club, I sat there at a table. And in my mind, I kept saying, why am I in this place? Why am I here? Because that wasn't God's best for me. That's not God's will for my life. 
he has so much greater for you and I. And so um, we'll look at a few more scriptures before we close out. But take the yoke of Christ. So some other scriptures, and I like to reference scriptures that have that term or, or something similar to that term in it. And um, so in John 8 and 32, it says, and you will know the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. He said, so, and you will know the truth and the truth. Who was the truth? Jesus. The truth will set you free. So from the yoke, Jesus sets us free as we know the truth. Knowing here, not just like, okay, um, I heard of Lisa down the street, but I don't really know her. No, know the truth. Knowing who Jesus is. Walking with him. Knowing. And then um, in Leviticus 26 is another scripture. Um, starting with verse 1. God told them, um, you shall not make idols for yourselves or erect an image of, or pillar. And you shall not set up a figure, figured stone in your land to bow down to it. For I am the Lord, your God. For I am the Lord, your God. And, and, and for those that don't know, Lord means existing, self-existing, Yahweh, um, self-existing, your God, God, ruler. He's the ruler, judge of our lives. Um you shall keep my Sabbath and and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. He continues to say that. Um, if you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments and do them, then I will give you your rains in their season. And the land shall yield its increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last to the time of the grape harvest. And the grape harvest shall last to the time of so for sowing. And you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land securely. A lot of times the world has us to believe that being a Christian or being a believer is boring. But I, based on, I, and not just based on Leviticus 26 and, and the first part of that, um, where God gives them abundance as they obey him. Um, and they recognize that he is the Lord, the only true and living God. I'm a living witness. When I chose to walk with Christ and I chose to write for Jesus, a lot of time, there are a lot of genres out there that I could have chosen to write in my own will, but I knew what God had called me to write. So this is just an example. And, and taking the yoke of Christ, even at, like, when, when somebody bought one of my books, the message that God had put on the inside of me went out. And so... The world makes you believe that, oh, all this, you know, you're going to, all this stuff is going to make you happy, but it's not. God does say that he desires that you prosper, be in health, even as our soul prospers, right? But remember, the end of that says even. So that, in that sentence, means in addition to. Not substituting our soul prospering. Because that's what happens in the world. People are substituting their soul prospering from for money, clothes, all this other stuff. And in Leviticus, God tells them He will give them. And they will they will be securely in the land. Um, they will reap the harvest when it's needed. He will provide them overflow. And so we think about that when we are thinking about that taking the yoke of Christ, walking in relationship, um, coming out of bondage, and coming as a servant of Jesus Christ. And um, a couple other scriptures here I just wanted to kind of, um, you know, highlight. Um, one of them is Where it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We know um, that he cannot lie. So if he said it, he He will perform it. He will perform it in our lives. No matter what um, the yoke. The yoke may be I'm holding on to the pain from my past. And Jesus is saying, give it to me. Give it to me. 
Galatians 5 and 1 is another scripture. It says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So Galatians talks about sin as a yoke of slavery. Because you are slaved. You are enslaved to sin. If you're not a slave of Jesus, you're a slave of sin. And so, or you're a slave of Satan because we can't be both. A lot, a lot of times people say, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And that ought to really make us nervous because we have to surrender our lives to him. So I love that particular scripture as well. And um, just a couple, just a couple more. Um, Deut- Deuteronomy, and I believe I kind of referenced this one, but um, again, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And if you, if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. See, God will give us favor, abundant favor and, and, and grace and all these things above because it may look like the other nations or other people are prospering um, in their sin. But no, because if we when we have God, we have everything like we have. You can have all this money and don't have Jesus and you. It's a wrap. You I mean, you, you have nothing. You have nothing because remember the word says what would profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul. And so we have to take that yoke off. Take off that yoke. Take off that yoke. Take off that yoke. And then the last one here, just so that we know. Um, that. We don't, when we take it off, when we surrender it, God is, as we walk in relationship, we can trust Jesus to help us in every way. John 14 and 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the helper, the Holy Spirit is there. To help us so we don't have to try to fight it on our own. We can't fight it on our own. Not for real. Because if I were to try to fight my sin on my own. I would still be in it. But as I, all I had to do was surrender. See it's different in the kingdom. You you just lay it down. You, You lay it down. Surrender it. And God does the rest. Give our lives to him. Today. Take the yoke of Christ. For his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your peace. That surpasses all understanding. As we take the yoke of Christ. And we lay down the yoke of sin. The yoke of bondage. The yoke of rejection. The yoke of fear. The yoke of uh, molestation. The yoke of um, every kind of abuse. The yoke of every sin. Because we only sin against you, God. And we take the yoke that you have so graciously provided for us, Father God. So I thank you, O God, for touching every heart, every mind, every soul that's listening to this podcast. And helping us to walk in freedom in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you once again for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. Be blessed and continue to hope in Christ.